Hello, and welcome to episode 10 of the Low Back Pain Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Grant Elliott, here to talk to you about when should you deadlift? Is there an optimal time to do so? How can you help yourself avoid injury, keep a strong low back, and maintain strength through the rest of your life through optimal deadlift timing? There is, and we're going to get into it. On Monday, our last podcast, we had just discussed a much more in-depth conversation regarding the benefits of an inflamed disc. It was all about disc herniation. We dived in deep about the three different kinds of disc herniations, why inflammation could be a good thing, the anatomy behind a disc herniation, how some people are rushed to injections or surgery prematurely, and ultimately, how you should go about letting the inflammatory process take place. Now, many individuals who have to make these kinds of decisions or work through this are individuals who have hurt themselves in the gym, squatting or deadlifting. So there are some strategies that I have for you to help you determine when is the best time to deadlift. And the reason I bring this up is because many individuals have enrolled in my program because they hurt themselves during a deadlift uh, weeks ago, months ago, years ago, and have been really, really struggling to find relief. And I know it's tough. I know it's very bothersome. People love to stay active. They want to feel like they can pick their groceries off the ground and not be in pain. Or uh, maybe they were a more serious athlete and they used to be able to deadlift, you know, 300 pounds and now they can barely do the bar, right? These are individuals I talk to all the time and it can be very frustrating to feel limited in these capacities. So our spine is made to bend. It is. Our spine is made to bend forward. It's made to bend backwards. It's made to bend side to side. It's made to twist. It is made to do all these things. Now, What most people understand is that during a heavy lift, during a deadlift, during a squat, you want to maintain a most neutral spine that you possibly can. We all know this. There's no professional powerlifters who are intentionally rounding their back or anything like that. Now, when you're at the heaviest of loads, there might be some rounding. Is that necessarily bad? Well, not if you're used to it, not if you're adapted to it, but that's a whole other discussion. All I want to break down for you today is a very simple and practical approach to the time of day or when you should deadlift. Most deadlift injuries occur in the morning. Most do. And here is why. When you sleep overnight, I've made videos on this before, there's a process that occurs called imbibition. Imbibition is when the discs itself resorb fluid, they resorb water, and they inflate overnight, much like taking a water balloon and adding some extra water to it. Now, most people would assume that's a good thing, and it is a good thing. We're getting more nutrients and more fluid in our discs. All good, okay? But what also happens with that is if there is a sensitive disc, you might notice that the more puffed up or the more filled up that disc is, if it's a sensitive one, you might notice that it's a little bit more sensitive in the morning or a little bit more irritated. And this is why most people with active disc herniations with sciatica found that they're more stiff in the morning. The sciatica is worse in the morning. You know, they wake up, it's difficult to stand up straight initially, bend over, tie their shoes. It's typically worse and it gets better throughout the day as they get moving, as they get moving. That's kind of a buzzword that I'm going to be reiterating throughout this podcast for when you should deadlift and why. Now, even if you don't have an injured disc, what can occur here is when your discs fill up with fluid overnight, which once again, we have more fluid in there, they're hydrated, it's all great, everybody's happy, but its ability to move and bend and twist and turn is a little bit reduced. It's a little bit reduced, right? It's almost like, let's say you just went to the gym and let's say you do a whole bunch of bicep curls, okay? 
what a lot of people sometimes notice is if their chest is all pumped up or their arms are all pumped up, it's almost like a little bit harder to like, you know, scratch your back or reach under and reach your bra strap or something like that. Like your arms are all pumped up. And in that moment when it's all puffed up with blood and, and fluid, it limits mobility a little bit in that moment in certain muscle groups, of course, and around certain joints. That's sort of what happens with your spine. So first thing in the morning, your spine is actually not able to withstand these excessive ranges of motion under load as much. No matter who you are, if you are deadlifting and you're pushing yourself, there is going to be some flexion or some rounding of the low back. It's just going to occur. It's going to occur no matter what. No one's perfectly neutral. Perfectly neutral doesn't technically exist because everyone's neutral is going to be different, but you're not going to be perfectly neutral. There's going to be some rounding. And what we know and what we see is that your spine's tolerance to rounding is less first thing in the morning because all of the, those discs are fl filled up with fluid. It makes sense, right? If all of your discs are filled up with fluid, then your spine's like a little bit, a little bit stiffer. Okay, things are things are puffed up. Okay, it's, and, and you're just stiffer in the morning in general, right? Like who gets out of bed and they're perfectly limber? Not many people. You're a little bit more stiff in the morning, and yes, that's because joints have not moved so much overnight. But it's also because those discs are filled up with some fluid. So first thing in the morning, you're getting out of bed. You're uh, you know, wiping your eye crusties off and waking yourself up. You take some pre-workout, you go to the gym and you're ready to deadlift heavy. That is not the ideal time to do so because if you're really pushing yourself and you're going to some degree of spinal flexion, those discs are not as tolerant to that as they would be later in the day after you have moved because once those joints of your low back, once those discs of your low back have moved around a little bit and actually lost some of that fluid, they're able to move more. They're able to tolerate more motion. They're able to withstand more rotation, more extension, more flexion. They're more tolerant to these. So technically, the time of day and of course, your warm-up strategies and what you're doing in your life and what you're doing at work, all these things matter. But the main point of this podcast is that morning versus afternoon versus night is a big predictor for injury with deadlifts, basically going in order of most susceptible to least susceptible. Once again, it depends on your daily habits, okay? But if there's someone who loves deadlifts and they're going to push themselves really, really hard, going first thing in the morning is not the most ideal time. Not only are you physically less hydrated, you physically have less food in your body, you physically have less nutrients, but your discs are more swollen, so your body's performance level is slightly lower if you don't have all these other factors going on, you're not as hydrated, but your discs are more hydrated and do not tolerate loaded flexion as much. If you move around a little while, you get some meals in, you get some fluid in, and your discs actually lose some of that fluid by the afternoon, you're going to be in a better position. You'll probably have more energy. Your spine's going to be able to move a little bit better. It's going to be able to withstand these ranges of motions a little bit more. Then maybe by the evening time, yeah, I mean, most of your spine stiffness is going to be vastly reduced unless you are sitting in a chair all day, not moving, not following good habits that I preach uh, on a daily basis to get up and move and take frequent movement breaks and to do the right rehab movements and things like that. Then maybe you'd be really stiff at the end of the day. But specifically with spine mechanics, you're going to have the least amount of fluid in those discs near the end of the day, and they will be able to tolerate loaded flexion or deadlift load greater than they would have first thing in the morning. So you have more of an advantage of not injuring yourself or of you know potentially having an even greater performance session as you progress throughout the day as opposed to first thing in the morning. And for me, I can personally see this. I can feel this in myself. Many of you know I'm very serious about lifting. I'm, I'm deadlifting 500 plus pounds on a weekly basis. If I 
deadlift first thing in the morning or after one meal, I will not be able to pull it for as many reps as if I have the exact same routine, but the following week I deadlift in the afternoon or the evening. I will absolutely be able to do more reps at a better performance later in the day than early in the day. Every single time. It is consistent. It is consistent. So not only is this supported in the literature, but anecdotally, which ultimately you know doesn't matter that much uh, because it's just an anecdote, but myself and most elite lifters would agree that this is just something they notice within themselves, that with these bigger lifts, they tend to perform better later in the day when they've had more meals, had more time to move, had more time to limber up, had more time to hydrate their bodies and things of that nature. So if you are someone who has injured their low back in the past, and maybe you're not dealing with it now, but you love to deadlift and you love to squat, I highly advise you do these things later in the day and not so much in the morning. If you are someone who's looking to improve their performance with deadlifts and prevent low back injuries from occurring, I highly advise you to not do them in the morning and to do them later in the evening or afternoon. Just get moving a bit before you do them, okay? Now, ultimately, I don't want you to hear this and think, oh, Grant says that deadlifting in the morning is bad and you will hurt yourself if you deadlift in the morning. I want to make it very clear that that's not what I'm saying. I am not saying that you will hurt yourself deadlifting if you deadlift in the morning. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying your susceptibility to both injury or poor performance is just higher in the morning. If you are someone who has been training first thing in the morning, maybe you're one of those people who gets up at 5 a.m. and works out before work, and you've been doing that for years, obviously your body is adapted to that. And if that's a routine that works for you, there is no reason to switch it up. There's no reason to completely change it because of this podcast. You don't need to throw your routine out. You don't need, you don't need to become scared. You don't need to go, oh my gosh, you know, I, I, I'm going to hurt myself if I keep doing this. I have to find another time to deadlift. You don't need to do that. If your body's used to it, if your spine is adapted to that, if those tissues are adapted to that, just like calluses, calluses build over time, right? Your spine can build calluses too you are okay. No worries. But if you want to optimize your performance, then yeah, you might want to put them a little bit later in the day and you might notice some greater gains or some better performance. If you're someone who is currently dealing with a low back injury and you're having a hard time working through it and you're still trying to deadlift throughout the week and you're noticing, man, I just, it's still bothering me. And you happen to be deadlifting in the morning, try later in the day, try the afternoon, try the evening. You might notice a difference. Now, if you're someone out there who's struggling with disc herniation sciatica or low back pain and you're still struggling to get into the gym, no matter what time of day you're lifting and you realize that you just don't have a plan to work through this and you're not addressing the root of the issue, well, then I'm sorry, you you, you you gotta message me, okay? (laughs) It's time to get these abilities back because I know how frustrating it is to be living life not at 100%, not with full confidence in your body, not feeling like you can push yourself. So you need to submit an application so you and I can meet and we can work together and we can put the right plan together for you so that you can learn how to fix yourself, you can learn how to fix your low back, not be dependent on anybody else, and you can understand not only how you resolved it, but how you can keep it resolved for the rest of your life maintain good performance, maintain 100% quality of life for the rest of your life. If you enjoyed this podcast and you learned something from it and you're listening on a podcast platform, please rate and review this podcast on iTunes. It would be greatly appreciated. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, please subscribe, and please comment for the algorithm to help this podcast grow. Those are very meaningful, but easy, zero cost ways to support this podcast and to help me improve production and to keep going with it. And as always, if you have additional topics you would like to be discussed, please leave a comment or message me what you would like to hear next. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening and let's continue to work together to slowly reduce the number one disability in the world that is low back pain. Thank you and have a great day.